In Matthew 27, 46, it says, At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Over the years, I've heard a number of believers express a certain amount of apprehension about this passage. On first glance, it looks like Jesus is having a crisis of faith here, and they say, how could Jesus be saying this? After all, didn't he know everything that was about to happen to him? Let me assure you, Jesus knew exactly what was happening to him. Remember back in the garden in Matthew 26, 52, at the kiss of Judas, a crowd from the temple armed with swords and clubs seized Jesus and Peter. And Peter attempts to defend his Lord and cuts off the ear of the servant of the high priest. Jesus rebukes Peter, telling him to put away his sword. And he says to him, do you not think that I cannot appeal to my father and he at once will send me more than 12 legions of angels? That's 78,000, that's a lot. But how then could the scriptures be fulfilled and it must be so? So Jesus knew exactly what was going on. He had just finished praying in the garden that if it were possible, God would let the cup pass from him. Jesus knew exactly what was going on. The very interesting thing here is that Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani is a direct quotation from Psalm 22. In fact, the Psalm starts with these very words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, now you must remember that the Psalms were like a hymnal of sorts to the Jewish people. These texts would have been used frequently in the temple, at festivals, at funerals, during Shabbat. They were in fact a regular part of Jewish culture. So when Jesus says in a loud voice, mind you, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Every Pharisee, every Sadducee, every scribe, every Jewish young man who'd been bar mitzvahed instantly knew this text and knew the words that would follow. It would be like me saying, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You would immediately fill in the rest of the song because it's that familiar to you. Psalm 22 is an unmistakably messianic text. Let's take a look at some of the passages. Verses one through two. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me? from the words of my groaning. My God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Verses six through eight say, I am but a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him for he delights in him. Verses 14 through 18, I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It melts in my breast. My strength is dried up like a pot shard and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death for dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothes, they cast lots. Can you imagine the horror of being a Jewish person caught up in the moment, proudly giving your approval and punishment to the shameful death sentence being dealt to this blasphemer? And upon hearing Jesus shout the opening phrase of this familiar psalm, you see the fulfillment of it before your eyes. The cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Is a declaration that Jesus is the promised one of Israel. But for us, it's so much more. I don't want you to get the impression here that the cry was scripted. Jesus isn't hanging on the cross at the point of death saying to himself, I think I'll quote some scripture. No, this is real anguish because it is real forsakenness. 
please understand what's happening here. The triune God has lived in perfect love and unity in eternity. And because of sin, your sin and my sin, the Son of God becomes temporal so that the perfect justice of God can be carried out on the perfect lamb of sacrifice. That sin was not a pretend sin. He bore our sins legitimately. And in justice, the Father forsook the Son. He turns his face away from Jesus. It is this break in community that the Father, from the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that causes Jesus to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus isn't quoting Psalm 22. Psalm 22 is quoting and describing Jesus. If you want to understand this Easter, the cost of redemption, it's not the beating, the torture, and the humiliation of our Lord. It's, his, it's not even his crucifixion and even his death. The real redemption is the broken community of the Trinity. I like to say it this way. The cross is heaven bankrupting itself for you and me. This is the height, the depth, and the width of God's love for you. He took the greatest treasure in heaven and spilled it out on Calvary to redeem you and me. So let's come to him this Easter. Let's join the workers in the harvest of others who will hear and respond to the gospel message of Good Friday. God loves you.